My name's Kathleen and this video I decided to make a little bit different than videos I've made in the past. So as opposed to a video about one finished project, uh, I decided I'm more going to just kind of be a little more vlog style, um, bring you along with me while I have a crazy couple weeks in terms of what I'm doing sewing wise. One of the classes I'm in this semester is about, among other things, Norse mythology. And for our final project, we are each diving deeper into a topic that we've covered during the semester. And so I, being who I am, <laughs> uh, chose fashion and Originally, my plan was to kind of research just what were the basics of the wardrobe and kind of talk about that. And this has slowly devolved into I'm making an entire um, Viking Age women's uh, outfit. This project is due in, I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but about two or three weeks and I have several items to make. So I'm kind of having this like sewing marathon going on. So the items I'm making, I'm making a linen underdress, which that fabric has yet to arrive. Um, I am making a wool apron dress. It's a very thin wool. I got the fabric yesterday, I'm so excited. I've never sewn with 100% wool before. And so I kind of was having like a geek out moment when it got here yesterday but um so I'm making an apron dress I am making a tablet woven belt if I have time I'm planning to tablet weave some trim for the apron dress and or underdress and this is totally unnecessary but I'm learning how to nullbund which is um in the same vein as like knitting or crocheting but it uses it uses a single needle I don't have a nullbund needle so I've been using an embroidery needle but anyway so I'm making a pair of Nalbin socks why I don't please someone tell me why I'm so busy no one told me to do this much work for this project I just decided to I will also need to get a pair of brooches for my apron dress these are the oval shaped brooches they're called a lot of different things like tortoise shell brooches or turtle brooches um, I, because of budget, I'm not going to probably be able to buy a good pair. So I'm planning to make a pair that's good enough out of like um, Sculpey, that like clay that you can bake, um, that is just good enough for, will be good enough for this presentation. Because those are more than just jewelry, they are what hold the straps of the apron dress over your shoulder. So they're a must have, but even a pair that is like really cheap and will break immediately uh, is more than I'm kind of able slash willing to pay right now. I also have a shirt I need to finish for my school's fashion show, which is in two weeks, um, which I actually have right here. I need to, I basically need to make the sleeves. I have the body of the shirt finished, but so that is in addition to all of my um, Norse stuff, I'm going to be making that. So yes, come along with me on this uh, crazy week or two of crafting and creating and having fun. Yes. Now let's all enjoy a relaxing tablet weaving montage.
Okay, so this bit of the belt is getting long enough that I'm having to reach pretty far forward to turn the tablets. So I can use this as a chance to show how my loom is set up. Um, and I say loom as if there's an object that actually exists. Um, it's two belts and like some rubber bands and safety pins and stuff. But anyway, so on my end, let's see, I'll turn this, see if you can see. On my end, I have a belt that's just a piece of twill tape tied around my waist. And then I have two safety pins that I loop the finished part of the belt through, uh, the finished part of the weaving through my belt and pin it in place. I have another belt that I can attach to any basically like upright structure. I can use like a table leg or this is one end of my bed right now. Um, so as the belt gets longer, I can lower the end point of the loom, basically bring it closer to me since there's less um, unwoven warp thread that needs to be kept taut. I keep the other end untangled. Um, this really isn't necessary. You could just tie it in a knot, but I have two pencils and two carabiners that this keeps the threads for each of the tablets in the right order, which I find really helpful. So since I now am shortening the uh, part of the belt that is um, between me and the other end of the loom just by pulling this finished section through my belt and sticking the pins back in it. I am ready to go and keep weaving. I need to kind of sit back a little bit. Kind of leaning my weight backward keeps these tight um, so they don't get all wonky. This is not my first tablet weaving. Uh, far from, I have done several practice ones with varying degrees of success. Um, this is probably the best one I've done so far. There's still some oops spots, but yeah, I've tried a lot of different things with how to set up the loom, and this is just what's worked for me. Um, in the research that I've done, when, like when I was learning and stuff, it seems like there's but a bunch of different ways to set up your loom, whether you have an actual physical loom or you're doing the belt option. This is what works for me, but it is by no means a be all end all. This is how you have to do it. Hello, it is late Sunday night. And before I go to bed, I was just going to check back in with the progress I've made today. Lighting's wacky at night, so please don't mind that. But anyway, so I finished my tablet woven belt. Um, I'll probably have some pictures or videos later of trying this on once I have something else. Um, the tassels I've left pretty long for now, but I'll probably trim those to the length that I want them at some other point. Also, I'm making good progress on Binding the sleeve holes, arm size, that's the word. Anyway, binding the arm openings on this shirt. This one got a little wonky in a couple places and I haven't ironed it yet, but I did realize once I started working on the other one that I forgot to clip the curve before I uh, did the other side of it. I'm gonna iron it, see how it looks. If that fixes it, I'm gonna be like, good enough. Um, but if it's still pretty wonky, I might undo it and clip the curve, fix that. Uh, and then here on the other arm, I'm getting this binding sewn on. I'm almost all the way around, but this I'll probably finish over the next couple days. I'm really tired, I'm gonna go to bed. It's Monday and I accidentally woke up like an hour or so earlier than I needed to. So I was able to use that to get some bonus 
sewing and chores done that I wasn't planning to be able to get done today. So yes, I this morning finished the armholes of the shirt I just showed you. And then I also restarted my knob and sock. I took the time to basically do more research, watch more tutorials, did that, figured out what I was doing wrong and restarted. I have way less done now than I had on the original. So I'm, I am like setting myself back like that, but I'm learning how to do it correctly. And learning always involves messing it up a bunch first. And so this was my messing it up. And hopefully now I'm learning the correct way. So that's that on Nullbund. And I still have another class today, but before then I have time. And so I'm going to use that to cut out the fabric for my apron dress. Okay, I just finished double checking all my measurements and my pattern diagram. Uh, we all know measure twice, cut once, and especially because, as you can see, I don't have any pattern paper. Uh, because, and this is one thing that I think is really cool about different periods of history where fabric was so precious that the shapes you see are made all out of squares and triangles because that wastes the least fabric. No curves, that doesn't, you're not left with those little scrappy bits of cabbage. So I, my plan is I have my diagram drawn into my notebook and I did have to change, tweak a couple of the measurements, nothing major, but I'm really glad I uh, went back and checked all that before I started cutting um, because otherwise that could have been bad. But yes, so I'm just going to draw my pattern right on here with my chalk and hopefully you will see how, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's all interlocking squares and triangles. Tuesday. Uh, sorry if my hair looks a little weird. Um, I just got back from roller skating. Yeah, I'm learning how to skate backward right now. I, I say I'm working on it. It's a long way to go. I can move backward, but um, doing it on purpose and controlled uh, is yet to happen. But anyway, it is Tuesday and most of my progress that I made today was on my socks, on my null bending. And yeah, so you can see I'm working on the cuff of the second one right now. I finished my first sock earlier today. Um, I made the heel last night while I was just like chilling out. They're very interesting colors because I realized halfway through this sock that I didn't have enough gray yarn to make two whole gray socks. So instead of like running out and then being like, ah, and finishing it up with uh, some other random color, I decided to try and make it look on purpose. So I made the toe of the sock in my orange yarn that I have. And then I also just added a little band up at the top. And this, this purpose was twofold. Uh, one, to make the orange look more worked in to the design. And then also I had accidentally made the opening of this sock way too big. And I couldn't tell that I made it too big till I got like a little bit into making the sock. So I used this to essentially reduce the circumference so it's a little weird and bulgy but overall it fits better now it doesn't like slide down as much so now i'm just working on 
the second one tomorrow I will probably be getting into the actual construction of the garments, the main garments, the underdress and the apron dress. This evening I may also start looking into a tablet weaving pattern that I could do for trim on the apron dress. I'm debating if I would just do across the top or if I do all the way around the top or across the front and on the hem. I need to do some more research to see kind of I know that tablet weaving was used to decorate these garments, but I want to do some more research into how, like how was it applied? Um, because that'll make a difference in how long I need my finished band to be. I also need to take some pictures of some of the garments I've made recently for a portfolio project for one of my classes. And I should probably cut out the fabric for the sleeves of my blue shirt. Um, I could do that tomorrow, but since I'm just kind of chilling this evening, don't really have anything going on, um, I might go ahead and get that done. Do, do a little work for tomorrow me today. Welcome to my floor. So I am going to be cutting out oops, the fabric for the sleeves of my blue dress I was working or not dress my blue shirt I was working on yesterday how I'm going about this so I have two colors um, because they didn't have a like tool a net that would match my the main body fabric um, I debated what to do, but I did find that basically these two colors when layered on top of each other do match the shirt fabric pretty well. Um, if my eyes did not deceive me in Joanne's. And my pattern piece is half of the sleeve and I need to have it cut on the fold. So what I've done, I'm gonna try and cut it all in one piece, all in one go by, um, I folded the my piece of fabric in half widthwise and then lengthwise. So I essentially have the two edges of the fold stacked on top of each other. So I'm going to go about pinning this and then cutting it out. Wednesday night and that means it's time to go to open sewing lab yay so I've got my little bag all packed with my three different projects I don't know exactly what order and how much I'll be able to get done with each tonight there's some lab hours tomorrow night too so I'm planning to go in then too um, my priority is probably going to be First, the sleeves for my shirt for the fashion show, um, because getting those, the amount of work I need to do on the machine for those is relatively minor. Then it would be constructing the main seams of the apron dress. Um, and then lastly, I brought the fabric. I, I washed my linen today. Um, I brought the fabric for the underdress, but I'm probably not going to have time to work on it just with the sheer volume of everything else, but I'm hoping that I can at least iron it. Um, the lab has good irons and bigger ironing board than I have, so that would be nice because it is a wide fabric. It would take me forever with my little dorm-sized ironing board, but yes. So I don't know if I will be able to film in lab at all. So you might be seeing some nice little montage of me at a sewing machine. You might not be. Hello, it's Thursday. And this is probably the only footage I'm gonna have from today because I'm really trying to buckle down and get that schoolwork done so that I can work on this stuff over the weekend instead of needing to work on schoolwork. 
But anyway, I just want to show off what I have so far. So this doesn't look like much. It might look like I have a tube of maroon fabric pinned to my 18th century shift. And that's because it's basically what this is. So this is the apron dress so far. I don't know how true to color it will show up. Uh, so I have one side gore sewn in and I have these seams finished. This one is probably gonna get sewn in this evening. Um, I don't have the straps done yet. I'm waiting to do those till I have my turtle brooches so I know how long they need to be. I have my lovely tablet woven belt that I'm so proud of. And then I have some cozy little Melbourne and socks that I just finished. So yes, that's how it's going. So tonight at lab, I will probably try to get this side gore sewn in. Um, but that's probably all the work I'm gonna get done on Norse stuff on Viking stuff because my piece that I still need to finish up before the fashion show, those deadlines are coming up. So I need to get the sleeves on that. So that will be priority number one tonight. This will be second. I seriously doubt I'm gonna get to my underdress, but yes, this is how it's looking so far. Not like a lot, but I'm really happy about it. I'm in my car and I'm about to head out and run a whole bunch of errands, but one of which will be getting supplies for making my makeshift tortoise brooches. So yes, I've got all appropriate braces and mobility aids and I've got a backpack for carrying stuff and you would think I was like gonna be hiking the Alps how much it takes to get prepared to go for one simple errand run, but that is the being disabled life. We love it. Yep. So that is what I'm off to. And I'm hoping that this weekend will be very productive and I can get a whole lot of good work done. I said I wouldn't do it. But here I am. I got supplies to make shoes. It is vinyl instead of leather because, uh, your girl's budget does not work for leather, but it does work for the vinyl on the clearance rack at Joanne's. So here we are. I'm gonna have some fun shoe making time. done it again. I got um, really engrossed in the process of making the shoes that I totally forgot to be recording anything, which, oops. So yes, my shoes are done. Uh, the style is um, the like ghillie style, which is the probably the most simple style that I've found. There is a slightly more simple version than the version I did, but there is no sewing. It's just one piece, punch some holes, throw a piece of cord through it. The funny thing about the ghillie style is my dance shoes are also ghillies. So modern Scottish dance shoe versus Iron Age shoe. It's There's a lot of differences, but it is. I found it very interesting that that general shape general idea persists. Yes, so this first attempt at shoes is not very good, um, if I'm being honest with myself, but that's not something I'm beating myself up about. I mean, I wasn't going for perfection necessarily. I just wanted to try this out. And I feel like even though these didn't turn out great, I learned a lot from, even from like the first one I made to the second one, um, such that if in the future uh, Viking Age, Iron Age fashion is something I want to do more with, and if I want to make a real version of these shoes in the future, I have gained a lot of useful knowledge that I can apply. That's the whole point, right? I mean, this is all learning, and so yeah, so that's my gilly adventures. Good night. I have shoes 
and I have a weekend now, so. And I have supplies to make brooches, so. It should be an exciting few days. I started off Saturday with just some more of my hand sewing, hemming my apron dress, and then backstitching in the tulle sleeves to my shirt for the fashion show. have drawn up an idea that I think I'm going to make for my brooch. Um, I'm not painting it these colors. This is, I'm color coding it. Uh, my sketch kind of so I know what means what while I'm making it. I looked at a bunch of different um, pictures online of both of oval brooches that have been found like in graves and stuff and then also different oval brooches like replicas that you can buy and I kind of took some of my favorite elements that I saw in like three or four different ones and kind of combined them and we'll see how this goes. Um, I may be asking a little too much of myself in this design. Um, I am not super experienced with clay of any kind. <laughs> so we'll see how this goes. I'm planning to then make the pin out of wire. I would grab the wire, but it's on the other side of the room. It's not in reach, but um, yes, that and I have paint so I can paint it once it's all done. And I'm really hoping <laughs> that that works. And once that's done, I should be able to make measure and make and place the loops on my apron dress so that it will actually be wearable and while this bakes because I got an oven baked clay I will probably work on hemming my apron dress yes so off to friend's apartment who has an oven okay so before I get going I thought I would just show what is in my portable travel sewing room. Um, so this is, if I'm going somewhere that I'm gonna be working on a project, I have this, I also have a smaller tote bag, but um, this is the one I've been using for this project. So if I'm on the go and I need to bring my projects with me, what do I bring? So for today, for the brooches, I have clay, paint, wire, and then my combination pliers, wire cutters, um, as well as what I just showed, my sketch. Gotta have your plan with you. I have my paper scissors, just because you never know when you'll need them. I have kind of my other necessities. I have phone charger, headphones, and water bottle always bring water. Don't get dehydrated. Then I have my actual projects themselves. So right now I'm bringing with me my shirt for the fashion show. I just need to finish getting this sleeve stitched in and then my apron dress to hem. And then last but certainly not least, one of the most important things is this is my sewing kit. So I have various other supplies um, total, but honestly, I could make a whole garment with the supplies that are in this bag. As you can see, it's like barely six inches long. <laughs> I know it's six inches long because that's long how long my seam gauge is and it just fits. But yeah, I think there's a misconception that to sew you need all of the supplies and all of the things and it takes up all the space and I mean you can um but really I mean in here I have I have thread pins scissors 
needles. I do, I love this little needle container. It has a pretty, it has a magnet at the bottom so all the needles stick in, but it's weak enough that you can pick them up easily. I have chalk, seam gauge, needles, I already said needles, um, seam ripper, thimble. So yeah, everything I need, I can fit in this uh, free sample of makeup bag. But yeah, so that's what I'm bringing with me today. I, oh, this is also silly. Uh, I have a party hat <laughs> that I have to give to my friend whose house I'm going to. But yes, that is my portable sewing room. Here I am just painting my finished brooches with some acrylic paint. I had to do several layers because uh, the paint was not an area where I was investing much in this project. I don't paint a lot, so I kind of went with the cheapest option. So I paid for that in time, having to do several layers of paint. But overall, I'm really happy with how these turned out, and even if they are nowhere near what a proper set of oval brooches would look like. Honestly, I just had a lot of fun making them. My uh, friend Sydney and I worked together and it was just fun to do that. So in my mind, this is a success uh, passing with flying colors. It's the end of the first week of this kind of crazy sewing marathon thing. And let's check in and see what progress I made this week. So here are the items I've made so far for my Viking project. Um, I also did finish my shirt for the fashion show this week, so I'm all good to go on that front. In terms of my uh, project for class, I have today I finished my oval brooches, which... I guess here, I'll show the back. I used some wire to make a pin on the back and then a horizontal bar I can hang my strings of beads from. So I'll probably be making my necklace things tomorrow. I have my tablet woven belt. I have my null bending socks, my <laughs> very makeshift shoes. My, uh, we're calling these good enough. Um, so I have those and then this is my apron dress. It is finished except for the straps, which that's kind of like an important part of them, but it's all hemmed and all the seams are finished and everything. So I have been over here, I've been working on making the loops that will, these will be for. Um, and so I'm hoping tomorrow I can make those loops, get them attached, and the apron dress will be, like, done, done. And then possibly I will be able to um, start cutting out the fabric for the underdress. But for now, thank you so much for joining me this kind of crazy week. And... I hope you have a lovely day. So thank you so much for watching this video. Um, even though it's pretty different from what I've made in the past, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hopefully will see you again soon with more of this sewing adventure.